uh, first for our farm partners now uh, we are in partnership with the Okiaru Pig Farmers Association which is actually the largest pig farm in West Africa and what we have done is to be able to provide easier access to the resources that they require to thrive and expand and then also for our pork money partners now these are the people that have keyed into our vision financially so that we can achieve these goals we've been able to give them the very best value for their funds and then the most beautiful part of what we have been able to do as well is introducing indigenous pork products uh, what is commonplace ordinarily you have sausages you have bacon but they are all imported so what i'm saying is we'll be able to bring pork products to more people faster and fresher and healthier which is very important i'm calling on mr ayodele on there he's great good morning ladies and gentlemen my name is Ayodele Omiri. Um, I'm the lead consultant for Pork Hub Nigeria Limited. Um, what we basically do is um, we manage um, livestock and we specialize in pig farming. Today I'll be facilitating the training session on how to build a profitable pig farm business. The objective of this training is to have an understanding on how to build a profitable pig farm business. And by the end of this session, I expect um, everyone here to be conversant with the following principles of building a profitable pig farm business, housing, breeds, feed, and the value chain of pig farming. I'm sure we have, I can see some existing pig farmers here, and I'm sure we would also have a new new and intending pig farmers here. For the purpose of, of this training, we would have to look at some terminologies that um, might not be very familiar with new pig farmers and some old farmers might also not be familiar with some of these terminologies. Um, when we say pig farming, what do we mean? When we say pig farming, what do we mean? It's the raising and building of domestic pigs for commercial purposes. When we are talking about building a business, what do we mean? We are talking about creating, establishing. If you have been having the idea of, okay, what kind of business can I go into? We are now telling you that, okay, you could create, you could build, you could establish a pig farm. Profitable. I'm sure some of us have people that rear pigs, maybe just on dung hills and they just go to pick it up whenever they need to, uh, maybe um, during the festive period. But here we are talking about having a pig farm as a profitable business. People are going to this business and they've come out to say, wow, it's not profitable, I got my fingers burnt. But here we are talking about having a profitable pig farm business. Then what is business? A regular occupation, profession, or a trade. I'm an expert in pig farming. That's the only thing that I do. I don't do any other thing. So I can tell you that it's, you could, you could, you could um, use pig farming as your business, as your trade, as your profession. Now let's go into the technologies that we will be using in the course of the training. Swine. Swine. When we say swine, this means a head of pigs, different um, um, pig species. When you see them in large numbers, we call them swine. Piglet. A piglet is an unwind young pig. That is a pig from day one to about six weeks. From day one to six weeks, we call them piglets. Unwind is when they have not been taken away from their mother. That means when they are still breastfeeding. Boa. Boa is a male pig of breeding age. A male pig of breeding age is what we call a boa. Barrow or castrate, that is a castrated pig before puberty. We don't keep all the male pigs on the farm because we need the male pigs to go 
as fast as um, possible, the castrated pigs. So assuming I have, I have um, 20, 20 um, piglets, I might decide to keep just one of the boas and castrate the other ones. So the castrated ones would grow faster than the boa. Why? Because the castrated one is not thinking of mating. Every consumption is to add weight. So the stag, that is the, a male pig castrated later in life. There are some factors that we consider before we serving a male pig. We look at the features, we look at the traits, we look at the characters while he's still very young. But some of this might be might not play well in the future. So there are times that when it's matured and we see that it's not performing the way we want it to perform, we still need to castrate at that stage to say, okay, I thought you could mate very well. I thought you could do what I expected you to do, but since I'm not doing it, let me castrate you so you could um, attain um, better weight. Sow. Sow is a breeding female. A breeding female is what you call a sow. A sow is um, the females that we have separated for breeding. What do I mean by breeding? For reproduction. So it's not all the females on the farm that we, that we, um, we serve for breeding. We look at the ones that have good features, which we, we will still talk about in the course of the training. The, the guilt. The guilt is a young female that has not been mated, in quotes, a virgin. Pork, the meat of pigs, farrowing, the pig betting process. When a pig is giving birth, we call it farrowing. Then a pig pen is, is where we house the pigs. Yes, I'm sure a lot of people will be wondering why pig, why pig, why pork? Probably maybe you go to your normal um, market around your, uh, your house and you don't see anybody selling pork, um, except you go to a few supermarkets and grocery stores, that's where you see it. Um, this is a statistic showing the consumption of pork all over the world. You can see that of um, 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 beef, cattle, poultry, Pork is having the highest of 39.8%. You can also see the other graph there showing the consumption of pig in um, 1961, 2005, and 2050. You can see that in, um, in 2050, we'll be having, the consumption of pig is going to rise to about 143 million tons, trillion tons in the year 2050. So why pig farming? Why, why should you go into pig farming? Why shouldn't you go into rearing of chicken? Why shouldn't you go into rearing of cows? Why shouldn't you go into rearing of um, uh, um, fish? Pigs have the ability to feed on food waste and byproducts. This, this is one of the reasons why it makes it very, very, very easy and convenient to raise pigs. What do I mean by food waste and byproducts? Your kitchen waste, after you eat in the house, your leftovers, when you, um, when you peel your yams, the yam peels, um, plantain peels, you can go to the market, gather vegetable waste, food waste, and give to your pigs. Byproducts, what are byproducts? Byproducts are Products that are no more useful for companies, but are useful for pig farmers. Examples, wet penguin. What is wet penguin? Wet penguin is the, is the byproduct from the breweries. By the time you go to the, um, for all, all the malt you drink, the malt, the harp, the star, all Guinness, most of Guinness products, they go through a process that we call the brewing process. The brewing process is the process of um, grinding different grains, um, wheat, barley, maize, sorghum. 
and other maize and other grains. They grind this, this um, uh, um, grains, extract the liquid, and the remaining comes as a um, shaft for the for for our mothers here. We call it the the, the, the obas, a selgi, the shaft from maize. So that is the way West Penguin comes comes out. We also have other byproducts, palm kernel cake, which we call PKC. Palm kernel cake is a byproduct from from the palm kernel oil industry. We have um, bread waste from bakeries. We have um, um, gala waste from um, UAC, UTC, those that produce chin chin. For everybody that produces anything that is edible, all their waste are useful for pig farmers. Indomie noodles, Honeywell, name all the companies. They, all, they have byproducts that are useful for pig farmers. Viability and profitability. Pig farming is profitable. Pig farming is profitable. We'll get to um, where we would um, look at the figures. High product reproduction rate. Um, pigs has been confirmed to be one of the most reproducing animals all over the world. Um, a pig can reproduce up to 20 at a time and it can give birth, they have the ability to give birth twice in a year. If well managed, they can um, take in the third time before the end of, a, end of that year. So their high reproduction rate makes it very, very profitable. Resilience and tenacity to withstand any weather. Pigs are very, very, very rugged. They can withstand all weathers. Though they prefer when the weather is not too hot, but they have the ability to withstand all weathers. The growth rate, that is a very interesting part of pig farming. The growth rate for pig farming is, is I, I, I don't think there's any animal that attains that kind of weight that um, um, pigs attain. You can imagine um, a pig born today and you are selling it in the next seven, eight months. In, for, uh, in to say 70, 80, 90, 100 kilograms. Feed conversion rate. Pigs convert, they have a very, very high conversion rate. What do I mean by conversion rate? What they eat, they eat heavily as well, but they convert major, majority of what they eat into weight. So it makes it very, very interesting and then also profitable. Yes, pig farming. Pig farming is one of the most lucrative business when it comes to the livestock industry. It's one of the most lucrative. We have seen some of the reasons, and um, an average pig of 70 kg can sell as high as 33,600 naira for life weight. The present, um, the current um, price for a kilogram of pig is 480 naira. It is important that you consult a professional pig farm before you, you build your pig farm. It is very, very important. Some other things need to be considered while setting up your pig farm. In case you are thinking of setting it, your pig farm outside the pig farm settlement, you have to consider how close would you be able to get your inputs. It is important. Is your farm close to a brewery where you can have access to West Penguin? Is your farm close to women that make um, that, that um, process cassava where you can get your cassava peels? How close is, your, is, 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 is the farm to your house? Because pig farming is not a business that you can do and you just say, I'll be, I'll be going there once in a month. You have to look at how close can I access my, my farm. In building your pig farm too, you can see the structure of the farm. It has to be well ventilated because pigs don't like heat. The farm has to be well ventilated. If possible, you can see the first picture. You can plant trees around the farm. 
to give it a bit of shade. Now we are going to the breeds. Two major things need to be considered before stocking your pen. Two major things. Healthy stock from a recommended farm. You have to look for, you have to be sure of the source of your, of your stocks because it is very, very important. There are several issues that affect pigs. The fact that you are seeing the pig looking healthy, if you are not a professional, you can take that pig to your farm and the next six months is not going. It might be runt, it might have issues. We have issues of inbreeding. What is inbreeding in pig farming? That is when you allow pigs of the same lineage to mate each other. If you get to a stage, the pigs will stop growing. So it is important that you are very sure of the source where you are getting your, your pigs from. The second point there, traceable history of the stock. If you are given the opportunity, you can walk around the farm to see what are the traits that you can see amongst the other pigs. Are the mothers, the, the sows, which are the mothers, like how many of the piglets are they wearing? For example, if you walk into any farm and you see the sows um, breastfeeding three, four, two piglets, that's a sign that those sows are not doing well. And it's possible that you are buying, you are buying their piglets, you are buying their, their stocks. So that trait in the sows might also be in those stocks that you are buying. So maybe when they give birth, some might be so lazy that they crush on the piglets, some eat the piglets as well. So you have to be sure that the history of the stocks you are buying, you are aware of them. Pigs are categorized into four major categories. We have the piglets. The piglets are pigs from day one to six weeks. We, these six weeks can be extended to eight weeks depending on how well they are doing. So when, when your sow gives back to the pigs today, in six weeks, remove the, pig, the piglets from the sow to say you have taken enough milk. Then they move to the next stage, the winners. Winners mean that you have weaned them from their mothers. You have taken them away from their mothers. They are now on their own without milk. So they are just relying on the food and the water that is available for them to grow. By the time they are 10 weeks, they move to growers. That means that um, they matured a little. So from 10 weeks to 14 weeks, they are in the growers stage. At that stage, you start identifying the sows that you want to use for reproduction. Okay, the jilt, because um, they've not been mated yet. So you, you will start identifying the jilt that you want to use for reproduction, and in also identifying your, um, um, your guilt at that time, some things need to be looked into. The, the teeth, the teeth, that is the nipple, we count them. Some, some, some guilt have lesser nipples, that is to say that it's not good for reproduction, because on the average, it shouldn't be less than 12 should be less than 12. Some might have 8, some might have 10, which might not be very, very good because even at the time that they will give birth, all of them might not be functioning. It's not possible for all to be functioning. So we'll have some that will not function. So we'll be looking at, let them have 12. So at least if between 8 and 10 is functioning, then we are good to go. We, we look at the, the, the legs. Are the legs strong enough that when the boa mounts them, they don't fall down. So if you have a pig that probably is not standing very well, it's not good for the production. Then from 14 weeks to about 20 to 24 weeks, that is the finisher stage. So at that stage, they are good to go to market. We should assume that they would have reached about 70, 80 
90 kg by the time they are 24 weeks. The different breeds that we have, we have our local breeds. Though we call them local, but they are not total local breeds. We have large white, Duwok, Landways, Hampshire, and so many others. Feed. Feed is like one of the most important aspects when it comes to pig farming. Feed is like one of the most important aspects because um, pigs are weighed at the point of sale. It's not like chicken. If you want to buy chicken today, you will say, uh, I will pay you this amount. You negotiate for pigs, for chicken, or for pigs. It's not like that. We weigh our pigs to sell. So at the point of weighing your pigs, it's like you have you've been reading for your exams in a while. So this is the day for the for, for, for you to get the result of your hard labor. So that is why it is important that we must feed our pigs very, very well. Gone are the days that people will say, just go to the market, pack um, um, waste on the market and pour into your farm. Yes, that is important, but that is not also all that it takes to feed your pigs. It is, it is um, important to know that where to source your inputs with regard to price and um, quality. Is, is as good as um, we even have softwares now that we input our feed ingredients to tell us if it is balanced or is not balanced. Just like humans, pig needs to have enough carbohydrate, protein, vitamins, the amino acids, fiber, classes of food that humans consume. What are examples of um, food that pigs eat? We have the West Penguin. I've told you what West Penguin is. Palm kernel cake, which is a byproduct from the um, palm kernel oil industry. The cassa we can use our cassava tuba or our cassava peels. If cassava tuba is expensive, but assuming you, are, you have a farm outside on your own in a location, you can decide to plant cassavas, plant maize, and use them to feed your, your, your pigs. They are very high in, in energy. When I mean energy, I mean carbohydrates. Our maize, you can plant your maize around your farm as well. We have soya, blood meal. Blood meal is a, is a, is also, I, I would say, is a byproduct from the abatio. When cows are slaughtered, when cows are slaughtered, the blood are put into a drum, cooked, chopped into small, small pieces, and served to pigs. The protein is about 92. We have the bone meal. Bone are also dried and also crushed for our pigs, as in cow bones. It, it has a very, it's, it's a very good source of um, calcium for the pigs. Then we have salt. We have amino acid, lysine, methylene, thionine, DCP, the calcium phosphate, enzymes, toxin binder, multivitamins, and many more. I'm rushing through all of this because some of these are a whole, they are a whole lecture on their own. So what I'm just giving you is just information and tips about, about them. Feeding your pigs alone, if I, decide to, if I decide to start, we might spend the whole day here. But um, um, that's not standing. I will still tell you a little about how you can feed your pigs. F um, pigs, they eat heavily. Pigs eat heavily. And um, a pig is expected to gain at least minimum of 0 0.5 kg in a day. That is half a kilogram in one day. So at the end of the month, we are expecting that a well-fed pig should gain 15 kg. A well-fed pig, not from birth, probably by the time the pig is like 30, 35 kg. We are expecting that the pig should at least gain between 12 to 15 kg every month. In feeding our pigs, we have to be very, very careful that we do not spend too much. We do not spend too much on feeding our pigs. That is why it's availability of byproducts, waste, where you can source for them at cheap price. For example, if you have a bus, if you have a pickup, you can decide to go to, to market, 
you can try to go to mile, mile, mile 12 where they sell fruits and then um, um, you will see rotten yams, rotten potatoes. They will give it to you for, for free. So in feeding our pigs, we have to be very, very um, careful in making some decisions about the, about the price, about the amount we spend and the quality of what we are giving to our pigs. If you have a vehicle that, that, that you can take to locations where the process Gary, you get your cassava peels, which is also very good in carbohydrates and then fiber to give to the, the um, pigs. Water, 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 water. Water no get enemy. Pig is also not the enemy of um, water, as humans are not. Pig is very, water is very important factor in pig farming. You cannot rear pigs without water. Water is very, very important. Because pigs are hot-blooded animals, what do I mean by hot-blooded animals? They don't have sweat pores, they don't sweat. They don't sweat, so it makes it very, 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 very unbearable for them when the weather is very, very hot. Some people will say pigs are dirty. Pigs are not dirty. The, the first, the last picture there shows a pig um, trying to cool its body. When you see a pig digging, it's not as if they are dirty, they are just trying to um, make the environment look untidy. They are actually digging to look for a cool place inside the soil because they are hot-blooded. So water is very, very important for our pigs. And they also consume a lot of um, water. You can see in the first picture, they are, consume, they are drinking water from a nipple, nipple drinker. So water is very important in pig farming. If you have your farm, you have to make sure that you have good source of water, borehole or well. You have to make sure that there is light to always get the water available. If you don't have, there must also be a generator in case there is no light. We cannot afford to manage water in pig farming because the, the, their houses have to be washed every day, twice in a day. We wash the houses in the morning and in the afternoon. Um, on a normal day, we don't have to give uh, pigs dirty water. Pigs don't drink dirty water. The water that we cannot drink, we should not give it to our pigs to drink. Pigs have to drink clean, cold, cool water. Equipping our farms. I'm sure you'll be looking at what equipment do I need? Do I need to go and import machines from China to start my pig farm? No. Basic farm equipment. You need your shovel, your shovel to mix your feed. You need your packer to pack the feces. You need your bucket to serve food. Your rain boots to protect your leg, your overall, and your broom. Broom is very, very important because you have to sweep, wash the, the pig pen. Fattening and breeding. Fattening and breeding. What is fattening? Fattening is rearing of pigs from, from piglets to maturity. We have different types of farmers. Some farmers will tell you, I don't have money to rear, to take these pigs to, to maturity. I just want them to give birth. After giving birth, I want to sell them off. And some will tell you, ah, no, I, I won't make enough money from that process. I want to rear these pigs to maturity. Some will decide I want to combine the two. But in my own opinion, combination of the two is the, is the best for us. Because by the time you mate your pigs, which you can see in the first picture, with a good um, boa, the pigs give birth. You already know the history of the, of the pigs because they are your own. It's not as if you went to buy the, the, piglets from, the, the pigs from any farm. Then the last picture there shows where they are being fattened. So fattening is wearing them, like in the third picture, putting them in a room. The, 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 the boas for fattening would have been castrated. We don't use boas for, for fattening. They would have been castrated. 
So you have a mixture of castrated pigs and then um, youth for fattening. So fattening is where the real money is because you can decide, you can have a projection with fattening. If um, you know that um, I, need, um, I need to change my car in the next five, six months. Okay, let's assume this is December and Mr. A wants to buy a, a new Mercedes-Benz Mercedes -Benz in June that is going to cost five million naira. It does for Mr. A to say, okay, how many pigs do I need to fatten to get five million naira? So if Mr. A decides that, okay, I want to wear these pigs to 70 kilograms, and 70 kilograms will give me 33,600 naira. So it's for Mr. A to just divide five million by 33,600. And Mr. A knows that, okay, with X, Y, Z amount of pigs, I will comfortably buy my Mercedes Benz in June. So um, fattening allows us to project. We can use fattening for projects. Breeding, as easy as it looks in that picture, um, is not as, uh, as that when it comes to practicality because piglets are very, very sensitive. In their first week of life, a lot of things need to be done to keep them alive because at that stage, the immunity is very, very low. Their, their body cannot withstand a lot of conditions that we put them because they are not in their natural habitat. Assuming is in their natural habitat, the mother would have, before um, farrowing, the mother would have made a bed for them that would keep them warm. But the condition that we put them is not their natural habitat. So we lose a lot of piglets. Piglet mortality is, is still one of the highest problem of um, pig farming. So piglet mortality is, is um, a, a major issue. So in breeding, we have to make sure that our pigs are, are well taken care of, majorly within the first and second week of their, of their life. Questions and answer. Yes, sir. Can we go back to the last slide? Okay. Um, so I wanted to know the basis of cost of labor being 60,000 naira for six months. Cost of labor, 60,000 naira. I think this is this is six months. We're looking at six months, isn't it? Yes, that is 10,000 naira every month, sir. So you are paying like a farm laborer 10,000 naira a month. Yes, because but it assumes that you yourself are working there full time. No, sir. Uh -huh. For you to have 100 pigs, uh -huh. you cannot employ a full time labor. Okay. The labor, the labor will just come, work for you in the morning, go and come back in the afternoon to do your afternoon work and it closes because um, the number of pigs you have is not enough to occupy him for the whole day. Assuming you have 500 pigs, fine, you won't be paying 10,000 naira. You can be paying as high as 30, 35,000 naira. Please, your, your name before the question, ma'am. My name is Mrs. Mokaji. I'm from the Farm Estate. Okay, ma'am. That cost of winners, you said that it's at 6,000 naira. It's not winner, growers. Growers. Well, winner is even younger than growers. Under the breeds that you were emphasizing, even in governments, Farms, the IITA or so. When I went there, a winner of eight weeks is sold at seventy thousand naira. If you want to get a good breed from other farmers outside, apart from the government establishment, you can't get it less than forty, fifty thousand naira. Okay. I think this team, we you, we must have actual or realistic costs so whoever that want to go into it will actually know what he or she is going in for so if anybody comes to me or to my farm or even to that establishment and, I, and i'm sure even to that okay 
buying a grower can't be less than 15,000 naira. Okay. Except that person just wants to help the incoming person or intending farmers to start rights. But I believe even winners, you can't get it at 6,000 naira. Now, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, you see, farmers make a lot of mistakes when they are going into the business. I have um, farmers that I've set up for that are here that can testify to what I'm saying. I will not advise you to go and buy a special breed for fattening. Why? Why should you go and buy a special breed of same time to fatten? You can only buy those ones for reproduction. If, if you go and buy a pig of 7,000 naira to fatten, how much do you want to sell the pig after six months? So, growers, like I said, when I was telling you the categories, I said, I, I said local breeds, but I said these are not total local breeds. I, I, am I, 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 are you fine with my response? So, if you are buying special breeds, you can only buy special breeds for reproduction. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. <laughs> anyway, I, I just did this yeah. just to prove that it's a profitable business. Okay. Um, so, if you are selling part of the things, it won't be profitable for quite a while. Let me let me let me explain further, sir. Number one, the rent, the one twenty five hundred for rent. Um, fingers are not equal. I, I won't advise. I won't advise. Um, um, rentage for a long period, but if you can afford to own your own pen, the better for you. What are my reasons? You, you we know number one, the the rent in my own farm now is a bit high because of the number of people coming into the business, which has even made the purchase of pen also very very high. To buy a pen of sitting on 30 feet by 120, which is about a quarter of a plot. If you don't have up to 4 million naira now, you cannot get one. So, the cost of rentage has also increased. That also under value chain. We have people on the farm that's, that say, okay, I don't want to rear pigs. I, I just want to be buying the pen and renting it out. So, 125,000 naira would only give you, say, seven to eight rooms. Yes, for six months, about seven to eight rooms. So to your question of saying, should you sell your whole um, pigs? I will not advise that you, you buy and you sell off all at once. Because like I said, it's when you are into the complete cycle that you make more profit. My name is and I'm in this startup. I got a land on lease, a, a, a plot and a half. But my challenge is based on the location in which you mentioned initially from the beginning. You said, based on government policy, it will not be situated within a neighborhood. But my challenge is the land itself is close to a bigger canal. And I wanted to use it for this pig farming. So it's this. Is it advisable for me to still continue pending when I can be able to relocate to a better location? Or what do you advise me to do? Because the, the, the land is already on lease for two years. Well, I, I don't know the location of the... It's Ajegunle Papa. Ajegunle Papa. Yes. Well, um, I don't think anybody would allow you to wear pigs 
as far as um, human beings live. Though there are pigs. Uh, those ones are on the dung hills. Yes. I don't think anybody would have, even the government will not even allow you. Not talk of those living in the neighborhood. Because the 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 stench of a pig farm. If if you come if I'm coming from the pig farm and I enter this room, everybody in this room will know that I'm, somebody has entered. <laughs>